Minister of Culture Steve Alashi is confident the Royal Barbados Police Force can ensure a secure crop over. He was speaking in response to a widely circulated WhatsApp message allegedly exposing a group's plan for violent retaliation during four-day morning celebrations. I have already allayed the fears in relation to certain things that have been floated around the social media. I have every confidence that the Royal Barbados Police Force is on top of its game and we continue to rely very heavily on them to ensure that crop over is safe and I have no doubt that it will continue to be safe this year as well. So persons who may be feeling a bit, you know, uh, anxious, there's really no need. Uh, we all have to practice safety but the Royal Barbados Police Force and the security services are very much part of the execution of crop over. The plans are on the horizon for this year's Massey Pan Pundisan, and in keeping with the island's 50th anniversary, it's expected to be very special. This from producer of this year's festival, Ray Eastman, during its launch, which included a $60,000 check from Massey Barbados Limited. Going under the slogan Pantabulous, he says this year will include a pre-show one hour before the festival with a number of groups including Daryl Jordan, secondary Tuck Pundi Move. In addition, the show will have a steel pan group out of Trinidad as a gift to Barbados from Trinidad and Tobago's government. This year's Pan Pundi San will also have a special emphasis on Barbadian culture. It has remained one of those special events during the crop over where families can gather bring their kids, their friends, all of them, you can meet, share a lot, one or two, fantasy distribution, and the great money, and where tourists can mix easily with locals without fear of incident while enjoying the sweet sounds of the band music. In addition, Massey's Head of Information and Communications Technology, Alan Herbert, wants other members of Corporate Barbados to support the Crop Over Festival. This is because he recognizes the social and cultural significance of initiatives like Pan Pundi San. Known for regarding the recall of several food and other items that could be here in Barbados. The Department of Commerce is working with importers and distributors to investigate the situation. They're trying to determine if any of the affected items on the list have been imported. Reacting to the recall in an interview with the CBC News while on a business trip in the UK, Minister Innes expressed confidence the issue will be addressed in the best interest of all consumers. The recent recall by uh, of products uh, from manufacturers in the, in the U.S. and other places are not a cause of alarm in the sense that we have dealt with these uh, off and on. The, the manufacturers certainly are very proactive in where they have concerns. They alert their distributors in Barbados who quickly notify the Ministry of Commerce. And we work in a collective manner to remove them from the market and to notify customers appropriately. And this has been working for many years. I, I really don't think any of us ought to have any uh, concerns. Rest assured that my officers are very professional, very competent, and that we have a private sector in Barbados that do care about consumers and do place their interests at the forefront of whatever we do. Well, among the products on the recall list are Mothers, Keebler, Kellogg Special K Brownies, Murray and Famous Amos Snacks and Cookies by the Kellogg Company. Government Senator Verla de Pisa says the current law on wandering is outdated and needs to go. She shared her views on the matter during a panel discussion hosted on masculinity and child abuse organized by Action for Justice. It does not in any way face the reality of one, young girls who are sexually active on purpose, two, young girls who are trying to find a way to tell the world what is going on in the house that they desperately do not wish to return to. Yes. And we, we really have to find a way to deal with the actual problems outside of the artificial creations that the legal system has devised. Senator de Pisa is also telling mothers who invite men into their homes to have sexual relations with their children that is child sexual abuse. That, I think, is an angle that we cannot ignore when dealing with child sexual abuse and will perhaps raise the numbers statistically of females who are abusing children and is a feature of our society that we cannot ignore.
Local senior child care officer with the Child Care Board, Colin St. Hill, believes fathers should take on the role in their children's lives as they ought to. He also believes their presence could help stamp out acts of child abuse. The abuse might occur when the child has to depend on someone else to provide financial support, to provide housing, okay? Um, stepfathers and the mother's boyfriend coming into a relationship, they don't see the female all the time as, as their own. They see that young person at 14 and so on, at 15 developing, and they don't see that person as part of their blood. And therefore the temptations are likely to be greater. Mm -hmm. And when the mother has to go to work and leave that child at home with the stepfather or the boyfriend and so on, it creates the opportunity. Mr. St. Hill also sees a role for the community in breaking that cycle of child abuse. Unfortunately, what happens in these situations, we, the people, take pleasure in pointing and pointing out, this one was abused, that's the mother, mm -hmm. she do this, and she did there with the man. Where as we don't come in to offer concrete assistance mm -hmm. and that is what we need to do more as a community provide concrete assistance to those persons who find themselves in these vulnerable situations and, prov and provide solutions and that is where we need to go in helping to break the cycle in terms of um, the, um, sexual abuse. Yeah. An official of a voluntary service committee is concerned about the decreasing number of young people participating in voluntary service. Its distinguished president and treasurer of the Kiwanis Club of Bridgetown, Malcolm Smith, and he believes that service organizations will have to come up with new ways to get more young people involved in community work. Now at this point, trying to enact different initiatives to attract young people. For example, one would note that we, some of the clubs have what we call online uh, Kiwanis clubs and or for young people, or we call it online professionals, where you don't actually meet on a regular basis at a precise location, but you meet essentially over the internet. You connect via Skype, or you connect via Periscope or those other types of apps and you form and, and develop activities and then execute them. Mr. Smith was speaking at a media conference held at Baiko Limited headquarters yesterday. For the second time, the Kiwanis Club is partnering with Baiko in an effort to encourage children to give back to other children in need. Mr. Smith says it is necessary for children to get involved in community service from a young age. So if you have young kids uh, buying items, buying food stuff, buying toys and giving to young children, I think from an early age, uh, they get to learn how to be active uh, philanthropists, how to be active in service of the country, and so that um, in the future, we could ensure that uh, this type of humanity, this type of service, um, continues and grows. Stay with us, we'll have regional international stories right after the break.